Hey everybody, it's Yousef and my daughter Sophia for Daddy's Free Time Game Reviews, where I review the games that I play when no one needs me. Alright, now, um, I decided that I was going to go ahead and do some long plays for Tenchu and, um, just play all the way through to Tenchu Z, you know, all the Tenchu games that I own. And, um, I got past Tenchu 1, and I'm posting the long plays for that, and then I finished up Tenchu 2, and I have to say, it sucks. I mean, it blows hard. Compared to the first one, it was, it was horrible. I mean, okay, let me start from the beginning. The story of Tenchu 2 is a prequel, so, uh, Tenchu 1 was basically you just, uh, going through, you, uh, you, uh, ran into, um, what was his name, Onikage, and, uh, then, then Onikage was the subordinate to, uh, Lord Meho, who is, uh, basically a, a king, maybe a devil from another dimension that's coming in to try and take over Japan. Um, but Lord Goda sends you uh, to destroy Lord Mayo. It's a pretty simple premise. I mean, a, a whole bunch of missions. You deliver messages. You um, stop uh, bad merchants. Uh, normal things that you would expect a ninja to do. Carry out assassinations. All right. Now, um, one of the things about the first game is that the music is really nice, the atmosphere is beautiful, the uh, voice acting is a little cheesy and campy, but it's good, and the, uh, the fight sequences at the end against the ultimate bad guys are really not that hard. If you hold uh, the back button and then you uh, strike or you use bombs that, that you're given in your items, you can pretty much go through okay, which is fine, which is actually a good thing because if you die at any point, you go all the way back to the beginning of the stage, so uh, you don't have any save points before you fight the bosses, and that kind of sucks, but I mean, if you know how to beat the bosses, you can play the game and have fun. Fair enough? Alright, so with the second one, it stinks because it took out all of the things that made the first one very memorable. All right, the story is a prequel to the first one, right? So uh, this is called the birth of the stealth assassin. So, so you're uh, being, you know, there. You think that they would show you uh, defining moments that that uh, shaped the assassins, but no. It's a uh, uh, look. The whole story is this. It's. Uh, Ayame and Rikimaru, who are the main characters in the first one, are in the second one, which is a prequel, but younger. Alright? Now, um, Rikimaru, there's no story. Ayame, there's no story. Alright? The story is about the, uh, person who is, uh, the newly appointed leader of the Azuma Ninja clan, Tatsumaru who uh, is the leader, goes on pretty much one or two missions, uh, has a fight with a beautiful girl with a large, well, she's well endowed, and he, he during the fight, he bumps his head, gets amnesia, and this uh, big, big-chested woman tells him that he is part of her group, all right? Which is the rival group of the Azuma Ninja Clan. Now, uh, her clan, the um, Burning Dawn, is a bunch of ninjas who decided that they're, um, <laughs> they're ninja, they're going to, to uh, defeat all of the lords in the area and create a land in which ninjas run everything, <laughs> alright? So ninjas are running all of this, alright? This and, and in order to do this, she has the lamest group of, uh, of, you know, cohorts of minions ever on the planet. I mean, there's a, a fat dude named Genbu. There's a bunch of guys that look like snakes and toads. They're just derelicts. I mean, I can't even believe that anybody took them serious as ninja. You know, the, the ninja that Tatsumaru killed was basically who he replaced 
when he uh, woke up out of the coma, I guess, and couldn't remember himself. She just basically said that he was the guy that she killed, okay? Now, as the story goes along, uh, and everybody's getting killed, uh, the whole the whole village, the Zuma Ninja village, which was apparently filled with old people, uh, it basically, uh, they get attacked by the Burning Dawn and everybody gets destroyed. You have betrayed your clan and your family. You will die. Because apparently Tatsumaru comes back, kills everyone. Then he kills the master. Uh, Rikimaru uh, fights Tatsumaru. And in the middle of the fight, Tatsumaru gets um, gets feisty and cuts Rikimaru in the eye. That is the only character development that actually happens for the main characters from the beginning of the uh, first game, okay? The, um, the fact that Ricky Maru got his eye sliced, all right? And then, I mean, as you can guess, later on, um, Ayame, for some reason, decides she's gonna take out Tatsumaru, and, um, you know, Ricky Maru takes out the Burning Dawn lady. And then, uh, later on, uh, there was one character in the game that was hanging around, uh, that was fighting and, and actually doing nothing. And then it was revealed, you know, at the end of the game that, that this dude is, uh, Onikage. And that he's preparing stuff for Lord Mayho later on. Very loosely tied in with the first one. Super loosely tied in. It, it's almost very ridiculous how they did that. Alright. Now, other than that, you know, they took out the music, right? So, in the whole game, there's nine tracks. And I'm talking about nine basic tracks to the whole thing. The CGI intro is basically clips from in the middle of the game. They didn't even make their own intro like they did in the first one. They um, did nothing to to create any sort of atmosphere. All right. So if you were in the first one and you're sneaking up on people and having a, a good time, you gotta wait for a while. There is some very calm music, uh, maybe some acoustic guitar. Uh, a couple of flute plays, things like that. Stuff that makes it a uh, nice, easy listening so when you kill people, you, you stay patient. Well, this game doesn't have that. What it does have is annoying atmospheric noises. I mean, there was one stage where it sounded like a bunch of coyotes were, were uh, having some sort of big love session. You know what I mean? Just howling, howling, howling. It was, man, I haven't seen, I haven't heard so much, so much crap with wolves since I, I watched all the Twilights in a row. <laughs> I don't think I want to admit to that. All right, so on top of that, the combat was crappy in, in that um, instead of just running up on people with your sword drawn out like Ayame and Rikimaru did in the first one, in the second one, they could have the option of running faster with their swords in or pull the swords out and move much slower. And on top of that, the terrain was... Um, was a little too multi-level and it killed the ability to to do um assassination 
animations all right in the first one there's there's these nice beautiful animations if you walk up on somebody and and then push the button at the right time your character will grab the person and stab them in a very vicious way but it's it's very cool right but in this game if your person is next to a wall or you're next to a cliff or if you're in a close confined area or you just happen to be on an inclined plane something like that it'll start your animation and then stop it all of a sudden and it's very ridiculous because that is supposed to be your reward for being a stealthy killer it's being able to assassinate somebody in a cool way they took that out right this is also a bad idea because there's an item system and the item system is based on uh, you having, uh, well, the first game had items that you would have because you get a Grandmaster rating, all right? You're, you would get a new item every time you'd get a Grandmaster rating. Eventually, you would get the armor, which is a coveted item because the armor would allow you to change your outfit and take less damage. Okay, now in this game, the items are all hidden, and the Grandmaster uh, Award is very difficult to get. I mean, you would have to be never seen, okay? And, and uh, never seen, you'd have to uh, kill pretty much everybody in the stage, or, you know, just kill two or three people and never be seen. Uh, it, it makes it hard. It doesn't reward you for being thorough, okay? And uh, other other than that, if you just run through the stage, you can get the stage done in like two minutes, maybe a minute and a half, unless it asks you to kill everybody. If you don't have the items that you want, you will be in trouble. And trust me, there is like a million items, and you only really need to use uh, three four or five you know you're gonna use the armor you're gonna use maybe the caltrops or, or whatever uh whatever you want to use the uh sake that that helps you get your energy back those things um are not plentiful all right also uh boss fights have the same issue in them that the first one does so if you lose in the boss fight then you go all the way back to the beginning the only problem is is that um, the boss fights are difficult if the boss is in a small area because the camera is very close to you and it doesn't want to swoop around also your ability to move is very limited I mean you can roll out of the way but roll is you know you push a button and then you push uh, two taps in one direction or two taps in the other direction uh, a roll is not so easy to do so your evasive maneuvers are pretty much down to block and attack now if you attack you attack forward and if your if your enemy gets hit twice and then kind of veers off to the side you're gonna finish the combo moving straight and then the other your enemy is going to attack you it it stinks okay and if you're uh one of those people who's trying to finish it without using the armor or something like that then uh every time you get hit you're going to get a chunk of energy taken off and if they trap you in a wall or the camera starts moving around the camera will do well for you to block you have to hold back the camera moving will dictate which button is actually back that you're holding so if you get backed into a corner and the camera starts moving crazy it is possible that your back will change to forward and then the guy will just uh murder you all right and there's a few times i've played in the boss fight in which the bosses there was three of them in a very small area and i i just i had to fight them so many times that i lost my mind and i was just going through the same levels over and over again flipping out very ticked off okay now uh one of the things one of the other things that drives me crazy about the, the boss fights and about any level in general is that the candles make you explode 
okay? Candles should not make you explode. I've never been hanging around in life, somebody lit a candle, and all of a sudden when somebody touches it, it just explodes. You just go flying off somewhere. But for some reason in this game, candles explode. And then they strategically put them in the boss fights so that when you are holding back or or you're trying to get away from a boss, you will, for some reason, instantly teleport up to the top of a candle and you will explode. And by the time you explode, you're gonna lay there, your, your boss is gonna walk up on you. And when you stand up, you won't be able to move. You won't have any evasive maneuvers, none of that, because you'll just be able to block and that is totally not fair. And I've died uh, because of some silly, silly combos uh, just totally based on the fact that, that I'm trying to set a stage so that I can win. You know, I can't beat the person using normal uh, stealth skills. I can't beat the person using uh, evasive maneuvers. The only maneuver I actually have is hold back and then a, a counter attack, you know. But it's, the game's not going to let you do that, you know. <laughs> And it made it very irritating to uh, deal with all of these things together. Now, if it was one of these things, or maybe two of these things, the games would have been a little bit more tolerable. But I know the developer knew that their game was shite when they put in all these cheat codes in order to help you beat it. All right. Now... I normally don't like to use cheat codes that much unless it's a cheat code that gets you, you know, extra clothes or something like that. But a after a while, I couldn't take it anymore. You know, uh, the game was so frustrating that it, it, I mean, it's daddy's free time game reviews. I don't have uh, forever to try and, and wait for a time to be advantageous for me. Now, also, the item system was messed up because every time you carry items into your battle, when you die, you lose your item. So if you had a uh, Saki that will, you know, help you uh, get your energy back, the character wouldn't just just uh, get their energy back. They have to stop and drink the Saki very slowly. So if the character, if your boss opponent or whoever knocks you out before you can drink the sake, you could be in trouble. Also, if they catch you in a corner and get you with some sort of stupid combo, you could get uh, knocked out before you even even have a chance to push the please give me sake button. All right, no no evasive maneuvers whatsoever. It hurts, you know. And I played the game and. I haven't felt this upset at a game uh, since <laughs> since forever. I mean, I, I basically felt like crying over this stuff, and uh, I'm a grown ass man. You know, my wife's asking me uh, why I'm so hurt, and I have to be like, "Man, this Tenchu game's kicking my butt." You know, come on now, really? I mean, it's an old PlayStation uh, One game, and uh, you know. If you should get the second one first, please note that it isn't, it's its bad in a way that is not like the other uh, Tenchu games. I've, I haven't played a game very often in which the second one is so much worse than the first one. First one is so much better. The first one, you definitely want to get, have it for your collection. Second one, Go ahead and pass over it. You could get, look, if, if it's out of bargain bin for a dollar or whatever, go ahead and grab it, you know. But uh, if you got a choice between that and any other game, just go ahead and pass that game up. It's not very helpful, all right? All it does is cover a story of a dude that dies at the end. It's stupid. It doesn't help you at all, all right? Anyway, uh, please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed that review, which was more me ranting for about 18 minutes. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review. Uh, my daughter uh, is asleep as we speak, even though she was awake when I started talking. So a surprise. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, uh, you know, do all the things that will help me uh, be better at my craft and uh, help me entertain you guys uh, much more. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Daddy's Free Time Game Reviews. Bye.